Good morning. It is Monday, September 13th, uh, 2021. Monday in the week of Trinity 15. We're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book. We're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture instructs us, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with a penitent, lowly, humble, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, Make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, you've seen a little evidence of Jude's activity this morning, uh, rocking screens and so on. Here's, here's his idea of, of being uh, helpful right now, is to uh, sit on the books I'm trying to use. We're at the 13th day of the month at morning prayer, for, uh, and that's Psalm 68 on page 419. Psalm 68 is, begins with God's, uh, the, the great... Uh, march of God through the wilderness, um, uh, 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 made visible, of course, in the ark. 
and uh, this triumphant progress through the wilderness and its conclusion uh, in the ascent to Mount Zion uh, in Jerusalem. And uh, so this psalm is, uh, uh, has its trajectory completed, of course, in the triumphant march of the gospel throughout the world and in the victory of Christ. And so it's often used uh, um, in reference to um, the giving of the Holy Spirit uh, on Pentecost. It's a, a psalm of Whitsunday. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Like as the smoke vanisheth, so shalt thou drive them away. And like as wax melteth at the fire, so let the ungodly perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. O sing unto God and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him that rideth upon the heavens. Praise him in his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. He is a father of the fatherless and defendeth the cause of the widows, even God in his holy habitation. He is the God that maketh men to be of one mind and in house and bringeth the prisoners out of captivity but letteth the runagates continue in scarceness. O God, when thou wentest forth before the people, when thou wentest through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens dropped at the presence of God, even as Sinai also was moved at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel. <coughs> thou, O God, sentest a gracious rain upon thine inheritance and refreshedst it when it was weary. Thy congregation shall dwell therein. Thou, O God, hast of thy goodness prepared for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of women that bare the tidings. Kings with their armies did flee and were disconfited, and they of the household divided the spoil. Though ye have lain among the sheepfolds, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove, that is covered with silver wings, and your feathers like gold. When the Almighty scattered kings for their sake, then were they as white as snow and salmon. As the hill of Bashan, so is God's hill, even at high hill as the hill of Bashan. Why mock ye so ye high hills? This is God's hill in the which it pleaseth him to dwell. Yea, the Lord shall abide in it forever. The chariots of God are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels, and the Lord is among them as in the holy place of Sinai. Thou art gone up on high, Thou hast led captivity captive and received gifts from men, even from thine enemies, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Praise it be the Lord daily, even the God who helpeth us and poureth his benefits upon us. He is our God, even the God of whom cometh salvation. God is the Lord by whom we escape death. God shall wound the head of his enemies, and the hairy scalp of such an one as goeth on still in his wickedness. The Lord has said, I will bring my people again as I did from Bashan. Mine own will I bring again as I did some time from the deep of the sea. That thy foot may be dipped in the blood of thine enemies, and that the tongue of thy dogs may be read through the same. It is well seen, O God, how thou goest, how thou, my God and King, goest in the sanctuary. The singers go before, the minstrels follow after, in the midst of the damsels playing with the timbrels. Give thanks unto the God, the Lord, in the congregation, ye that are of the congregation of Israel. There is little Benjamin, their ruler, and the princes of Judah, their council, the princes of Zabulon, and the princes of Naphtali. Thy God hath sent forth strength for thee. Establish the thing, O God, that thou hast wrought in us. For thy temple's sake at Jerusalem, so shall kings bring presents unto thee. Rebuke thou the dragon and the bull with the leaders of the heathen, so that they humbly bring pieces of silver. Scatter thou the peoples that delight in war. Then shall the princes come out of Egypt. The Morion's land shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Sing unto God, O ye kingdoms of the earth. O sing praises unto the Lord, who sitteth in the heavens over all from the beginning. Lo, he doth send out his voice, yea, and that a mighty voice. Ascribe ye the power to God of Israel. His worship and strength is in the clouds. O God, wonderful art thou in thy holy places. Even the God of Israel, he will give strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So I'm about to disrupt things because, of course, Jude is sitting on my copy of the Bible. So let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, Jude, excuse me. There we go. Oh, oh very well-mannered. No protests at all. Here beginneth the first, uh, the book of Esther. Uh, Esther is uh, one of the books that testifies to uh, the time of Israel's um, exile and its uh, uh, submission to uh, uh, the Gentile kingdoms, uh, first Babylon and then, in the case of Esther, of Persia. Uh, and uh, the opening chapter sets the scene. Um, uh, we will hear about a, uh, the queen, Vashti, a woman of dignity and decorum, who will not uh, make a spectacle of herself. Uh, we also see uh, the cost uh, that that um, uh, involves um, with a, um, a tyrant of um, poor judgment, such as her husband, the king. And that's that's going to give us important background for uh, the emergence of Esther and uh, her challenge and dilemma. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all the princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even an hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days, in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings, fastened with cords of fine linen and purple, to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver, upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being divers one from another, and royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel. For so the king had appointed to all the officers of the house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also, Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abagtha, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of of King Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come to the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said unto the men, and to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshina, Shethar, Adma, uh, Admatha, Tarshish, Miraz, Marcina, and Mimukin, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face and which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law, because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? There's a kind of petulance here, of course, a kind of childish petulance, uh, which uh, is uh, going to be indulged foolishly by his counselors. And Mamukin answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. The king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him 
but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it may not be that may not be altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus. And let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all this empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Amukin, for he sent letters unto all the king's provinces, and to every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Here endeth the first lesson. So there's uh, an element of satire here at the expense of this uh, foolish, petulant, uh, self-indulgent, and fundamentally very weak uh, tyrant. And uh, uh, that uh, the element of satire doesn't take away from uh, the seriousness of this uh, book, uh, but it is a, a, a refreshing kind of takedown of uh, self-important uh, secular, earthly authority. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Now just excuse me a moment. A little sniffle this morning. Okay. Uh, Philippians, um, the first chapter, uh, a, a short uh, book, um, one that overflows with uh, Paul's affection for the Christians of Philippi, and uh, remarkable also for its teaching, as we shall see. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Uh, important early reference to the emergence of ordained ministry. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Here endeth the uh, second lesson. What wonderful words uh, and, and one could hope that they would be said of us. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet, prophets which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, 
to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and one another and the whole church and people of God to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men, that God's ways might be known unto them his saving health among all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church upon earth, that it may be united in the truth of the gospel and in brotherly love and active in its mission and ministry in all places. I bid your prayers for this country and all countries, for their peace, order, and good government, for the deliverance of the peoples of the world from oppression, misery, and strife, especially the peoples of uh, Tigray in Ethiopia, um, of Venezuela and Cuba and Nicaragua, of China, especially in Xinjiang and Tibet and Hong Kong, of Yemen, and Afghanistan. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world and the faithfulness of their witness and worship. I bid your prayers for um, those who suffer in mind, body, or estate, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. I bid your prayers for all those who are suffering debilitating uh, infirmity, chronic pain, Uh, for those who are um, dealing with the challenge of sobriety. For those who suffer from depression or mental illness. For those who are hungry and homeless. For the unemployed, for orphans, those who have been abandoned. For... Um, those dealing with cancer and its therapies. For those who are undergoing surgery, are recovering from it. Uh, for those who um, uh, suffer cognitive impairment. For their caregivers. Uh, for those um, who are dying and we for those who are grieving. We remember before God those who've departed this life in the faith of Christ and are at rest in him that we with them may rise to glory. Lord have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy upon us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Keep, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy church with thy perpetual mercy. And because the frailty of man without thee cannot but fall, keep us ever by thy help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From today's epistle reading as this word of thankfulness and prayerful hope, which we can make our own. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more, in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace. Amen. And now, the final view of himself, who is now decided to take up residence in another place.